What's up, everybody? Just thought I'd share another video with y'all today. Uh, since last night, we got so much interest in the um, jazz piano video with the two five ones. So I'll show you a couple of things that aren't necessarily directly related to, related to jazz piano, but will make you sound jazzier when you're playing any kind of song. Cool. Um, so that, if you recognize that song, that's uh, Canon and D by our Parker Bell's Canon. Um, one second while I pull up the comments here, so I can answer y'all. Uh, so yeah, if you recognize that, that's Paco Bell's Canon. It's also a pop song now by Maroon 5, uh, Memories. <laughs> Almost, right? Um, so it's a very popular progression. Um, it's a fairly easy one too if you play it in C. I think that Maroon 5 song is actually in B. Um, but anyways. So let's talk about it. So normally when you play this and when Bach about wrote it right, it was just triads, right? So that means the first chord is C and there's three notes. The second chord is G and there's three notes. Uh, the next one is A, all three notes, right? E minor, I'll go through it in case you don't know it. F, C, F, G, right? So the whole thing is C, G. A lot of people put a B in the bass there because it works better towards the next chord, A minor, B minor, F, C. I'm inverting them now, just a little bit, right? So that's the basic way. So let's talk about a couple ways, simple ways to make this jazzier. Um, it's always funny to me how how much of a mystery jazz is and jazz theory is. Um, and when I learned it, I was like, oh, that's not that crazy. Um, so the first way is literally just make a seventh chord out of everything. Um, so we just did the one, three, and five out of every chord. Um, so now we're just going to add the seven, right? And see what that sounds like. I'm going to play them in root position right now just so you can see what they look like and so they stack up easy. You can play along if you're, if you're newer. So that's the first one, right? C. And I'm doing octaves in the bass. Don't feel like you have to do that. You can just do one finger. The finger drum and bass like I like to call it. <laughs> right? So we got one chord. B, E. I mean, sorry. C, E, G, and B. And then we got the five chord. Sounds a little weird in root position. I'll show you some ways to make that sound a little less weird. A minor. E minor. Kind of sounds like some kind of like house beat with the, with the seventh chords jumping off. Right? <laughs> but anyways, I'll tell you how to get away from that in a second. Uh, but that's the idea, right? It sounds thicker, it sounds more full, um, it sounds more complex, um, and that's what seventh chords do for you. Um, so let's talk about another way to use seventh chords. Let's invert those. Um, and instead of doing one, three, five, seven, we're gonna do five, seven, one, three, right? Which gives you a drastically different sound. Right, it's got the B and the C crunched together. Um, so it gives you that little grind, that little crunch, right? And then you go to the G, let's see. I always think about it, it's always a whole step uh, with dominant chords and minor chords, and it's a half step with major chords, right? And then A minor, right? Five, seven, one, three. B minor, F, C, F, G, right? So it sounds kind of crunchy, and it sounds a little predictable because I'm doing the same one. I'll show you how to mix these up in a minute. Um, but this is what it all sounds like together. Right? Pretty cool. It's getting thicker, right? So even now, if we take this and mix up the first one we did with that one, and kind of put them in a natural way, um, you'll get something like this. I'm going to start on the second one, and I, I didn't plan this out. I'm just going to see where it takes me, right? Uh, I think maybe there. That's probably a good step, but from here, it would make more sense to just open this up into the E minor, right? That was a nice move, right? I'll do that again for you. The A minor to the E, right? Now I'd probably move that F up. And here is where I go back to the other one, the second one I showed you, the five, seven, three, right? So switching back and forth gives you some nice voice leading. Put a little flat nine in there for you. Um, but yeah, so 
So that's the first two ways, right? One, three, five, seven on every chord, or invert it and say five, seven, one, three, right? Gives you a nice crunch, right? Um, the last way, is it the last way? Yeah, the last way we're gonna talk about today is gonna be a one, two, three, five, right? Um, this is kind of a gospel voicing, so a lot of gospel people use this. One, two, three, five, right? It's weird, I looked at the other screen which has a lag and I totally played something different. That was weird. Anyways, it's one, two, three, five, right? Um, so that sounds good. It's kind of crunchy, but it's not It's not as crunchy and not as like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't need a resolution as much as the, uh, the 7, 1, 3, right? That's like real crunchy. But, so we got the 1, 3, 5. <laughs> Make you said, I guess this is next. Yep, you gotta learn piano. I tell, me, I tell uh, all my drum students that you gotta learn piano if you play drums or any instrument. Um, piano is kind of where everything came, came from. Um, and especially if you play drums or something that you can't visualize all the music theory, like you, you have to learn piano just to see everything. Um, so anyways, one, two, three, five is going to be our next one. You might have noticed I put a five, I put a one and a five in the bass sometimes, or just octaves. Either one's fine. It depends on what you want. So one, two, three, five. Uh, and then we go to the G chord, right? That's a really nice one. Really, really churchy, right? Okay, so a couple reasons that sounds weird. It's down low, right? Usually you don't want these crunchy chords down low. Let's try it up here, see what it sounds like. It still sounds a little weird, right? So sometimes this one, two, three, five doesn't work. Um, that's the three chord, right? So you have this weird half step here, so it doesn't work. So there's a couple things you can do. You can change it into the nine, the regular nine, and add an F sharp. It's gonna be a little weird because it's not in the key, but um, or you could just do one of the other inversions like we did. Instead of the one, two, three, five, you can do the one, three, five, seven, or you can do the five, seven, one, three. <clears throat> right? Um, so, let's try that. Uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going. F, one, two, three, five. C, one, two, three, five. F, one, two, three, five. G, one, two, three, five. And C, right? So let me play the whole thing together so you can hear what those one, two, three, five sound like. Um, all in context. And when I get to that E minor chord, the only one that's weird, um, I'll either play a one, three, five, seven, or that one, or I'll make the F sharp, right? Here we go. I played a totally different one, I'm sorry. I'm doing a three, five, seven, one. It's another way, you can rearrange this however you want. Uh, one, Sorry. I'm doing all kinds of stuff I didn't tell you guys about. <laughs> um, and that's because that's the ultimate goal of these videos is to teach you a lot of different ways to do these. And then like I'm doing now and accidentally throwing in different inversions that I haven't taught you yet. That's what you'll do. You kind of naturally throw these things out um, and you have this vocabulary to do this. So um, a couple of the ones I just used, it's kind of like the one, two, three, five. But instead of the two, the two and the six are... Uh, arguably interchangeable so you could add the A to that chord instead of to the C chord instead of the two right the six um, so that's a C9 chord or a C add two chord or whatever you want to call it um, but if you do it here that's a C6 chord C major six right um, you can even do both you can play all five notes if you really want to give all your fingers a workout right um, let's see what that would sound like play it one two three five and six on all the, all the chords it's pretty. It's going to get really thick and a little bit annoying after a while. <laughs> but let's try it. Ooh, one, two, three, five, six. Uh, that's a little funky. I might do five, seven on the minor chords. All right. One, two, three, five. Yeah, I'll do one, two, three, five, seven. It's a cool sound, right? I'll put it up here. One, two, three, five, seven. kind of um, idea of what it is. Um, so now that you know those three, I'm going to play some and I want to see if you can pick out just by looking at the video which one it is. So look at the shapes, right? And when I play piano, I don't think about the shapes, but your hand takes a shape naturally and you kind of just follow that shape. Um, 
So like th that's a wide open shape, right? Every note is spaced evenly. Uh, the next one, the one, two, three, or sorry, the five, seven, one, three. That's got the crunch in the middle, right? So see if you can identify that visually or just hear the crunch and practice hearing those um, chords. And then the one, two, three obviously has the, the crunch, right? So I'm gonna play it a couple times um, just to, to end this here and see if you can identify those visually or um, or with your, I said visually or with your ear, visually or with your ears, right? Cool. Uh, so here we go. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Um, give us a like and a follow for more of these videos. We're going to be doing a lot more of these lives, um, just little quick, short live sessions, helping you out with little concepts like this. Um, and then if you like this, uh, check out our website and check out our $5 Zoom classes. And we also do private lessons for this stuff, too. Um, thanks, guys.